Jeff lives in Plymouth. If you saw him on the street, you'd think he was a perfectly ordinary 79-year-old. But behind his front door, it's a very different story. The situation has certainly taken over my life to the extent that I have a sort of dual personality of the me inside the house and the me outside the house, uh, where I behave as though the house is quite normal. Precisely like a secret life. Jeff had maintained that secret life for 20 years, until a few weeks ago. A bus driver came by and saw a lot of flies in the window. He then told the police. And the police thought, ooh, how's the inmate of the house died? And so they came along and banged on the door and there wasn't anybody there. And obviously I wasn't dead. So they then told the uh, council. The council told me about Jeff's story. Their environmental health officer has issued Jeff with a 42-day order to clear his hoard. His secret is out. And now he's been forced into a corner. Clear or be cleared. I can totally understand why Jeff keeps his hoarding secret. And, you know, I kept my mum's hoarding, the whole family kept it a secret for years because we were totally ashamed. I really hope that maybe through me telling Jeff about my experiences, that he might also find the courage to open up to some of his friends or family. By keeping it a secret, he's taking the whole burden, all the weight of all that hoard, on his shoulders alone. Well, impressed. yeah, people do, you know. It's, uh, I know, it's one of since my... Since uh, they've been invented about 100 years. Nice to meet you. Be... Oh. Jeff has made a start clearing, but after five weeks, he's barely scraped the surface. So what kind of things do you collect, Jeff? The things I collect tend to be things with lots of shiny knobs. I've got a variety of microscopes. I've got a uh, ultraviolet microscope. So I mean, basically, my interests are enhancement of human capabilities. So do you think there are benefits to having all the stuff that you've got? Well, it's shades of grey. It's shades of grey. And how do you, does the prospect of other people knowing about this, how does that make you feel? Um, it makes it me feel so un unpleasant that I just don't think about it. Maybe I can reassure you a little bit mm -hmm. because with my mum's hoarding, we went to great lengths to hide it from the outside world because we were ashamed and people just didn't understand. And eventually when we opened up with it, we were incredibly heartened actually to find out how many other people were in similar situations. We thought it was just us. Do you have any other family and friends that... I've got my sister. Your sister. Who, I think, requires the praise for putting up with me. Has your sister been to the house? Has she been to visit you no. here? She's one of the ones who I'm trying to conceal it from. Jeff's hoard has spread across all three floors of his house. Three bedrooms, a loft, and two large rooms downstairs, all rendered useless. When's the last time you were able to sit down in here? Well, uh, I don't think I ever have sat down in here. Having lived in this house for 25 years, you have never been able to sit down and relax in your front room. That's right. How far does that go through? I can only sort of glimpse. All the way 
you can't even see the size of the room. Well, you see the, the food museum. If I'm doing well, it's a tin a day. Tin a day keeps the council away. Oh dear. Oh dear. What's that room? That's the bathroom. When the bath were you able to use work. it last? But About eight years. <laughs> Jeff, you practically have to do the splits to get through here. Well, there you are, you see. People pay good money to go to health clubs. <laughs> You're getting this for nothing. <laughs> what I think we should do, Jeff, is try and formulate some kind of plan as to how we tackle what you want to do in the house. Well, my plan is to try to make it to the back wall of that room downstairs. That will allow me to get at a variety of computer magazines which are must be 10 years old. They can be flung. My worry about doing it in a very small space and doing it bit by bit is that it's very slow. One thing that we did with Mum was a warehouse where we took a load of stuff and it gave us space to sort. With what you've got to do, the task is pretty monumental. It makes me sad to think that he's been living like this for a long time. And the fact that he's got no one, I just think, God, how tragic that he's got to this stage. It's unimaginable, really. Basically, I wouldn't have believed it. I mean, Jasmine knew where I was coming from. It appears that I've got something wrong with me, which lots of other people have got. I'm no longer the unique me.